Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Rudy, and I'm a psychologist who specializes in addictive disorders. Today's topic is relapse. This may be an idea that's a bit tough to buy, but bad experiences like relapse often create the basis for a huge leap in self-awareness. This can be a great thing because self-awareness is necessary for self-regulation. A relapse focuses our attention on what makes us tick, how we respond to stress, what triggers us, how we are vulnerable, and ultimately, what we value. People tend to be the happiest when their values match their actions. Let's think about what you value and what you want to value. How much do you want to be happy and comfortable in your own skin? What about being a good friend or a loyal family member? How important is it for you to feel responsible and able to contribute to the welfare of your family? Is your health a priority? What about being a great partner in a relationship or a role model for a child? Being respected by others or having self-respect is often viewed as being essential. My guess is that you would value avoiding embarrassment and would like to be able to remember things. Just how important is integrity? I'd suggest you write down the reasons you've got for getting and staying sober and review them with some regularity, perhaps daily. It is often said that relapse is a part of a recovery, but I don't think that concept is very well understood. While I would not recommend it, a relapse can sometimes help long-term recovery because it quickly connects the individual with the losses associated with using and often focuses attention on the internal and external events that prompted a brief return to addictive use. You may have already recognized how internal thoughts and feelings combined with external events resulted in a return to use. Once you understand the connection between those internal and external events, you'll be in a powerful position to turn things around. There is no doubt that relapse is a wound, but that wound can create wisdom if we understand what happened. If you've relapsed, now is the time for action. Those who turn things around the quickest are those who recognize that they need some help. They seek a clear awareness of how their relapse happened. They commit themselves to doing what it takes and then they follow some well-established principles to regain the momentum necessary for success. Here's what works. Don't try to hide the relapse. Own it, admit it, and move forward. Ask for help from those you trust. You can do this, but you can't do it alone and you ought not to delay. You may need to remind yourself of just what addiction is. It is a complex biopsychosocial illness. Let's break down this biopsychosocial word. The bio refers to biological factors that contribute to the illness. It's things like fatigue, sleep, nutrition, aches and pains, and yes, cravings are a biological reality that you'll need to address. Uh, the psycho part refers to psychological factors like depression, anxiety, confusion, or anger. The social part of this biopsychosocial word refers to interpersonal influences like relationships with your partner, children, parents, co-workers, neighbors, or people in your community. In light of the fact that addictive disorders are biopsychosocial conditions, a variety of factors are apt to have contributed to the development of your illness, and a variety of factors are probably contributing to the relapse. And those same factors will need to be addressed to make things better. Once you've looked at the circumstances in your life that have contributed to the relapse, work with your coach, sponsor, or therapist to address those difficulties please think about this. If you ever find yourself saying, this addiction makes no sense, understand that everything makes perfect sense the moment you know enough. Your task is to discover just how things fit together in your life. Okay, let's deal with some nuts and bolts kind of issues. If you were attending support meetings and then stopped, it's probably a good time to resume them with regularity. 
If you had stopped calling your sponsor, make the call as soon as possible, perhaps when you're done with this podcast. Deal with the cravings by getting busy and distracting yourself. Go for a jog. Get to meetings. Get active with a hobby. Call a friend or bake some cookies. Do something that will take your mind in a different direction. Now chances are that during your primary treatment you had a list of goals and worked on skills to accomplish those goals. It's probably time to dust off that plan or develop a new one with your coach. Oh, don't just have a plan. Do it. No procrastinating. Now it may be difficult to admit but relapses are often prompted by engagement with toxic nouns. You know, the people, places, and things that prompted or created cravings. Uh, Discuss these things with your coach, your sponsor, or your therapist and come up with a plan for dealing with them. There is no denying that humans are social, and having a network of support will contribute to your success. You'll need to be very conscious of the choices you make regarding friends. For many people in recovery, 12-step group members form the nucleus of their friendships. But for others, it's their place of worship, neighbors, or colleagues at work. You'll need to think about who you admit into your network of supports. If shyness or social awkwardness have been a difficulty, think about group therapy or a social skills development group. Understand that boredom and loneliness are huge risk factors. Work to keep yourself busy and connected with healthy people. Along the same line, you'll want to recognize when you're the most vulnerable, and you may want to think about the HALT acronym that was included in another podcast. It reminds us that we are the most vulnerable when we are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Your physical health is clearly connected to your emotional health, So be sure to take care of yourself by eating healthy, getting exercise, getting enough sleep, and addressing any physical health concern. If you're a person of faith, consider what your religion tells you about your relationship with God. Spend some time at your place of worship and seek out spiritual wisdom. We hope that you'll consider what you value, where you want your life to go, and then reach out for support. You've already learned a great deal about the nature of this illness. Let's apply what we know and work to understand the mysteries that remain. Now try this. Write down the values that are important to you. Identify one or more people whom you can count on for support. Go do something healthy. You may want to experiment with change, try a new activity, develop a new friendship, or even sample some ethnic food that you've never tried. Be sure to connect with your sober coach and revise your relapse prevention plan. Thanks for listening.